If you ever wanted to make a magic mirror, here's your chance. Watch this video, you're going to see how it works. That's right. If you ever wanted to make a magic mirror like this, this video we're going to show you how to do it, some of the tricks, and it's pretty cool. It's almost in time for Halloween, right? So you can make a magic mirror and see how it can work for you. Let's go. So here's a magic mirror, although there's really no magic behind it. How does it work? Well, here's the trick. First of all, as you may have guessed, there's a TV screen behind it. And I've mounted it, obviously, vertically. So that gives us some challenges when we go to do the actual video that's behind it. But the actual mirror is glass two-way. So that's right, it's a two-way glass. I don't know if you can see it very well. It looks like it's reflective on both sides, right? But it's not. So you can actually see through the glass. Let's see if we can make it where you can see through it here on the screen. You see there? You can see the projection? So you can actually see through this mirror. It's pretty cool. So that is how the basics of it works. One side of it is a mirror. The TV screen. The TV screen is bright enough to shine through the mirror so that you capture the image on this side. So let's put it back on to show you that there's no special effects going on. It's actually the mirror itself that's working. Boom. So it's what's called two-way glass. I'm sure you've seen it before. It's pretty common in daycares and like when they're interrogating suspects for you know murders and stuff. But uh, you can use it as a mirror to create these cool magic mirror effects. So this effect we've used a lot in the engineering family. In fact, we've gotten probably 100 to 200 million views just with this magic mirror setup that I created. It really does play well on video. However, there are a lot of tricks about actually getting it to work with a video camera. Let's look at some of the challenges you face. Okay, so now all I'm gonna do is just move this mirror over a little bit. There. It just moved it. Notice that the image behind it is way harder to see? Well, that's because it's reflecting off of this wood here. So before, it was a black screen behind it, and now it's reflecting um, something that's brighter. So you lose all, the, all of the uh, contrast that you need for the mirror to work properly. Okay, so now you can see the image. You're gonna see a claw machine, and you're gonna see this black, kind of a spooky, ghosty pattern. And that's what's reflected back onto the mirror. So you got to have something that's kind of a solid color or close to it for it to uh, work properly. The other thing you got to be careful of is the camera, right? So you got to actually film at a bit, of, a bit of an angle. Now, if you just want to use the magic mirror effect, these aren't really challenges because, well, you're not trying to actually record it. It's recording the screen that's hard, not necessarily seeing the effect. So that last point's important. The mirror actually looks way better in real life than it does on this video. The reason for that, well, it's because the reflection. Your eyes does a, does a lot better job being able to discern the mirror and the surface than the camera does, surprisingly. Now, how do you actually get the image onto the TV? Well, what I use is a little media card reader like this. It's on an SD card. It's got an HDMI output, and I use the HDMI output into the TV, and then I can read the media through the media player to put on the screen whatever I want. In this case, I use a green screen. So the first step, well, you got to have something to put on your magic mirror, right? So we're going to use the green screen. We're going to take this, and we're going to key out the green for the green screen, and we're going to put it on the mirror. Okay, so we now have our uh, video file onto our um, computer. Uh, I use Adobe Premiere Elements just because like, on things like this, it is so fast. So a couple things we knew I like to do. First thing I like to actually is go in and uh, maybe just saturate the color a little bit and give it a little vibrance. So we'll do that. Notice I'm not wearing any green, which is important. And then we're gonna brighten it up just a touch. Okay, so then we go over to uh, Keen, which is on the right hand. Sorry, I'm not actually just doing a screen record. I'm just recording the screen, which is a different thing. <laughs> um, so go to Keen, and there's two ways to do it. One is the chroma key, 
we drop in the color, which is what I use more often than not. You set the color, and then you just kind of uh, get it how you want it, and like that. All right, and that's that's pretty good there. But then let's uh, let's just get it a little. I think I like to clean things up a little bit when possible. And one way to do that is just to do a crop. So we're gonna crop that. Um, first of all, let's get our settings on it. So let's bring all the bottom in. And the top, we can bring down, see where my head starts to go away. The right, we'll crop on the right until we see my arms start to fade off. Oops, went wrong way. So right there, and then on the left, kind of the same thing. That way we get rid of any artifacts that might be in there without having to. Uh... All right, so we have a nice uh, keyed out background. And again, if you wanted to, you could actually use key. Uh, you could use um, the keying effect on it uh, instead of uh, the chroma key. Um, so again, there's the crop. So it's you can see, it's probably easier to actually crop it when it's in the green screen mode. Um, let's go out and see if I like lose my arms. Eh, right there, they're gone. So let's bring that back in. There we go. Probably need to do the same thing at the left. Oop. All right, and we're gonna re-key it out. All right, so one of the things we mentioned was that that screen is actually not in portrait landscape mode, right? That screen's vertical not across. So that means we actually need to rotate our image. Just like that. All right. And one of the things also is that means it won't fill the screen. So we want to pull it up as much as we can without losing without losing um, without being cut off too much. So we're cut off right there. Let's go ahead. It's a little bit of an iterative process. Now, how do I know to go this direction instead of rotating it around? Well, just from practice. Um, so you, you may have to do this a few times to get it quite right. Um, but on this one, I know that I need to have him pointed, or I need to be rotated negative 90 degrees or positive 270 in order to get it to line up with the screen. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Okay, now we're at the point where we're going to render the file. So again, this is Adobe Premiere Elements, which to me is way easier to use. Uh, Adobe Premiere Elements has some major shortcomings, but um, quickness and ease of use is, is not one of them. So do we do 4K, 1080, um, 1920 by 1080, or you know what format should we use? Um, that TV back there is not in 4K, so let's not put it in 4K. Um, let's go ahead and drop down the resolution to just the highest 1080, which is 1920 by 1080. And the reason for that is, is that one, it's, it, it's a smaller file, which is great. Uh, two, it, it also gets rid of any formatting issues we may have, right? Maybe the reader that we're going to use isn't 4K capable. It can't read the media or it can read only a certain size file. Uh, these are all hiccups I've had in the past. So I'm just going to head and drop it down to 1080 because I don't need that extra resolution anyway. It's just kind of going to get in the way. So let's save it. And uh, I've got a pretty quick computer, but you can see this thing will render in about 15 seconds. I'll drop it onto a clean SD card. And the reason why I say clean is because I don't want anything else on there, right? So when I go to select the files, I want to make sure that whatever card I'm using is the one that that's the only file on it. So it's really easy for me to select. So I'm not digging through menus. So let's go take a look and see how, how it looks. So the first step, well, you gotta have something to put on your magic mirror, right? So we're gonna use the green screen. We're gonna take this and we're going to count. Remember me recording this? This is what it looks like in the magic mirror, right here. Pretty cool. So again, I had to zoom it up so it'll fit the screen. Um, I had to orient it correctly, otherwise it would play across the mirror instead of up and down, and that doesn't work. And again, pretty easy. So the whole setup, you know, really only takes a matter of a few minutes, depending on what kind of video you want to make. Um, or if you just want it for a Halloween decoration or something fun in your house. Um, your media player is a big part of it. I use the, uh, I don't know if it's Mica or Mika, M-I-C-C-A. 
right here. Um, it's got some quirks to it, but once you figure it out, it's, it's really not that bad or that hard to use. Um, so again, some of the challenges that you have. One is you've, if you're viewing it from the camera, the angle in which you, uh, you record is, is very important. If you record straight on, you're going to see the camera, which you probably don't want. Um, you've got to have uh, the right kind of background behind it. Otherwise, if you have a lot of colors or something, it will it'll drown out your image. And you don't want that either. Um, you need it to be relatively dark. Not super dark, like you can you can see me. I, I'm I'm lit. But I'm I'm also filming at a at a, a shutter speed of 100 at ISO 800. So which for me is a pretty slow setting for here in my studio. Um, but I have to do that so we don't have too much light that we don't actually um, wash out this image. So if you have any questions, let me know. The magic mirror is something that I use to help rejuvenate my YouTube experience. I always like creating new fun things and ways to surprise my audience um, just to make YouTube fun, right? Otherwise, it's super easy to get burned out if you're making the same thing day after day after day. Um, so creating a, a, a cool effect um, is, a, is a fun way to do it. The, uh, the cabinet itself I built um, it's just a pummel horse on a, or a saw horse, not pummel horse, a saw horse, and then I built a frame around it to set the TV in. Um, the mirror I actually bought as part of a kit. I put a TV in there, and, uh, and I bought the media reader myself. I think it came with one, but it was not that good, so I changed it out. And then obviously I make the files. So you, whatever you can think of and dream of, you could put on a magic mirror with two-way glass, a screen, some sort of way to hold the TV, and then your uh, imagination and creativity on what you want to film. So if you like this, hey, feel free to subscribe. I also have a cool video on how to make holograms, um, which I'm also pretty proud of. Um, make sure you subscribe, like this video. And if you have any comments, let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear them. What have you done on Magic Mirrors? Um, I'd love to see uh, um, if you have ways to improve the setup or uh, you know, if uh, there's something that we're doing here that uh, you hadn't thought of. So take care and have a great day. Bye, everyone.